Look at that snowy nonsense outside. <sighs> Meanwhile, inside, day in the life of a wildlife rehabilitator, fox turtle, he ate his dinner, it's about 7.30 a.m., and I've been up since 6, feeding animals and babies and everything like that. So he ate part of his carrot, he didn't eat a snow pea, but all his uh, red wiggler worms have been eaten. So good job, bud. In the snow outside, I can't release you. And then over here we have Buttercup. And she went to town on everything I gave her last night. So she has red wigglers and a carrot. Oh. So I guess they don't like peas. Lesson learned. <laughs> and then last night I got a call about a newborn bunny, Cottontail, and it's a single. And so what I've done is I've put a bunch of cotton balls in here because bunnies are kind of crammed together in this little hole in the ground type nest. And then you can kind of see if we can... Here we are. Hi baby. He just ate so he is ready... ready for a snooze. But I put these cotton balls in here because it'll help him feel a little more secure and um... and I put a little piece of hay so you know like you get that grass smell, so nothing, so it doesn't all just smell like humans. But the cotton balls will, like all the baby bunnies are crammed in this little nest. And, um, they do it for warmth, they do it, um, to stay safe. And so, I put these in so he would feel secure and do well. I plan on making, in a future video, little rice packs out of baby socks so that I can um, kind of better simulate litter mates for this bunny. So let's cover back up. <clears throat> and now the bunny is on a snuggle safe disc. It's warm. Um, and so is this one. These are my larger bunnies that I got last week and they have already grown up a little bit. Their eyes are open, their ears are up, so they're in a little bit bigger container if you can see the difference between the two. Um, so, let's see. Hello little butt. There they are. So, bunnies, these two are the pair, they're the survivors of a dog found their nest, and so they just ate, so they're ready to sleep it off. They're just so cute. Now, I am going to give a disclaimer, um, if you find baby bunnies out in the yard, if you can find the nest, put them back. If, um, <clears throat> if you find the nest, put them back. If you can't find the nest or they need help, call a wildlife rehabilitator. Don't try to raise them yourself because it'll cause nothing but heartbreak. Baby bunnies are so sensitive and they require a very specific kind of care. And if you can't provide that, the bunnies will die. So, please don't do this yourself. Um, wildlife rehab is not for the faint of heart. Right, Buttercup? Um, so, that's my morning so far. Let's take a peek. I just turned on the heat lamp. Take a peek at my um, patch job, Turtles. He's still doing good. He's ready for a swim, though, so I think we'll do a swim this weekend. Um, she, of course, is totally, really good. Um, last night she ate a big pile of, uh, red wiggler worms. And then you can kind of see her crack, the crack in her shell. So 
healing up. It's looking pretty good. And then let's um, take a peek at the little baby snapping turtle. He is so great. He tries to eat my finger. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how you know he's a good baby and he is so ready for release when it's not snow outside. Anyway, um, we'll pick it back up when I do some feedings later in the day. Okay, here we are on my lunch break and we're about ready to feed the new teensy baby. And um, this is the best way I could figure out how to film this, so Now, this baby is super young and a little bit fussy. Um, he obviously misses mama. Oh no, oh so fussy. And it looks like I'm kinda gripping him tight, but I am not. Now bunnies are super easy to aspirate, which means they get um, liquid into their lungs. And it's because of the way their nose and mouth is shaped, because they've got that split up the front of their um, mouth. And so you just have to be careful and go very, very slow. And as you can see, I'm really only Oh, look at that. But I'm moving it just a little bit at a time because you don't want them to aspirate. And so what happens when they aspirate, they get the milk, the formula into their lungs, and what it'll do is cause pneumonia, aspiration pneumonia. There you go, and that's all that baby is going to have for that meal because it weighs 37 grams and you only want to feed 5% when they're this, 5% of their body weight when they're this little. Look at that little mustache. And so just because their stomachs are so small. And so what we'll do is put him back in the cage on a heating pad so he can stay warm. Of course, he's in the nest with the cotton balls to pretend that he's with somebody. Oh, he's cute. Oh, so that's this baby bunny. If the camera would focus, there we go. And once again, do not do this unless you are a wildlife rehabilitator. Right. And now we're gonna get out. Our next size, this is just to give our bigger bunnies a little bit of a snack. Um, so this won't be a full meal for them. Now we've got their eyes opened two days ago. So they're still trying to figure out the world. And you can smell that it's milk. You can taste that there's milk on the end. And so when I say milk, this. He knows the game. Now when I say milk, I don't mean um, cow's milk. I mean this is specially formulated bunny formula that gives them all the fat, oh let go, protein and everything they need to be strong, healthy, look at this, strong, let go, strong, healthy bunny. 
good. <laughs> now here's the sibling. <coughs> And sometimes they get fickle because they are bunnies and it's their prerogative. Sometimes they're fickle and they don't want to eat. And this one is very all about only eating on his own terms. Oh. oh, why are you so squirmy? Oh. And then a lot of times, once they realize it's milk, <laughs> or formula, is what I should say, once they realize what it is, they're a little, they're okay, but it's just, they're gonna, they want to be strong, independent buns, and they just want to fight you. And what's important is to make sure that you don't stress your bunny, well I say your bunny, you don't want to stress bunnies out because they are very, very sensitive and literally everything kills them. Are you going to swallow any of the milk or are you just going to keep spitting it out? just want to make sure so this since this was just the snack meal this bunny probably wasn't very hungry because they got a full meal earlier today for breakfast so the bunny is probably fine <clears throat> and so now we're gonna put all the bunnies away and then we're gonna check on the other animals Let's flip the camera around. So, checking on Buttercup. She looks good. I really only feed the box turtles maybe once a day or every other day. Just because in the wild, they're, you know, what I'm feeding them is um, higher in nutrition than what they might find in the wild. And so you don't want them to become obese. Because <laughs> a fat animal does not do well in the wild. So, we just check on everybody, make sure they have water, and that it's clean. So let's go look. Clean water. I think he's in his hide on his heating pad. Stretched out under the heat lamp. Swimming. Hateful. Yeah. So here I'm back with the evening feeding. This bunny has already done great, had a huge meal. So it's getting ready to sleep it off. But this bunny, its litter mate, isn't as gun ho about the food, so it's a little bit underweight and a little bit smaller. Um, it's probably the rent of the litter, so I just really have to make sure that it eats all of its food. We've got a little bit more to go, but um, and you can see it spits them out. So we've got a little puddle of formula there. But we're just trying to make sure this little baby is healthy and grows like it's supposed to. Um, and I'm gonna also start offering clover because um, it actually finally thawed outside so I have little tiny clover sprouts so I'm going to try and see if it'll start to eat a few greens to maybe help round out its diet and help it uh, gain weight. And this baby I fed first so he's already eaten and he's snuggling in for a nap and to digest everything and as you can see I've still got these cotton balls to kind of help him feel safe in his nest. And 
this nest is something I crocheted to kind of simulate the hole in the ground that Mama Bunny digs. And I put a little grass in to kind of help give it that grassy smell to um, just be a familiar scent for the baby. It's after midnight and everybody's ready for their last meal of the day. Baby Bunny is like, please feed me, I'm so hungry. These guys are like, we like, we like formula. And so this is a lot of what wildlife rehabilitation is about is late night feedings. And basically you live on the baby schedule and not your own anymore. And it's just kind of like being a new mom because you have newborns and you have toddlers who are just learning how to eat solid food. So that's wildlife rehabilitation now in early March. As the weather gets warmer, more and more babies will start to show up. As always, thank you support for supporting Katie Doolittle, and I hope you enjoyed the day in the life of a wildlife rehabilitator. Alright, see you all next time. Bye! Don't forget to subscribe!